I said a preseason. If you watched my preseason predictions, I had said at the time that I thought I was cornerback group had the best had the chance at being the best um, of the Phil Parker era of the Kirk Ferentz era, um, at least the best since maybe 2009. I still believe that. Do I think Riley Moss or Matt Hankins are future first round draft picks? No, I do not. I think both guys are future third to fourth round draft picks. When you have two guys who are athletically sound, who are disciplined in their assignments, and who have been around the block plenty of times in Hankins and Moss, and healthy, that's the key for Iowa. If you recall in past seasons, Iowa's dealt with a lot of injuries at cornerback. In fact, the last time Iowa played Iowa State was the game where Iowa was down um, one of their two main cornerbacks, one of their two starting cornerbacks, and freshman DJ Johnson got burned in that game. And if you'll recall, over the past several years Iowa has played Iowa State, the only real success, sustained success, if you want to call it that, from Iowa State against Iowa, has been through trick plays targeting positions where Iowa was dealing with injuries. Now, that's part of football. I get it. But you'll recall the uh, double pass to Michael Petway in that game in 2019, and that was a, a result of D.J. Johnson, who was literally playing for the first time in his career. And, of course, later on, there was a, a fake pitch, which, you know, I'm not saying that's too intricate, but a fake pitch and a deep ball to Tariq Milton for a touchdown. And that, were the only two t- that was the only two touchdown scores in that game. And you'll see this under Matt Campbell that, Iowa State, if you throw out 2017, 2017 was weird because, first of all, it was the names. Iowa actually held Iowa State to 10 points until late in the third quarter, and then there was this explosion of offense. Iowa, Iowa pulls ahead, Iowa State pulls ahead, Iowa pulls back even, and, of course, the Hawkeyes win in overtime. But that was a really weird quarter and a half to end that game, and it really kind of pushed against the grain of the series. But overall, Matt Campbell has had – Minus that quarter and a half, the, the the second half of the third quarter and the fourth quarter of 2017, Iowa State has not had any sustained success offensively against Iowa under Matt Campbell. So, yeah, I, I didn't partake in the trash talk last. At least I don't think I partook in the trash, you know, the uh, the trash talking last week. Um, but this team, this Iowa team, is better than Iowa State right now. And I don't care what Iowa fan or Iowa State fans want. Oh, you know, you, you had our quarterback on the on his worst day. Well, guess what? That's why you play the game, all right. And the sample size is much larger now. Purdy is 0 and 2 against Iowa. Matt Campbell is 0 and what? He started in 2016, right? So he is 0 and 4, right? 16, 17, 18. 19. No, he's 0 and 5. Matt Campbell's 0 and 5 against Iowa. And I said to Levi Stevenson, I said, Iowa State needs to win. the. They have to win this game. And he, well, what happens if they don't? Well, what happens if they don't is the monkey on the back, on the back of Matt Campbell gets fatter and fatter and fatter. All right? Okay? Everybody wants to dog on Jim Harbaugh for not being able to beat Ohio State. It's Ohio State. Iowa State hasn't beaten Iowa under Matt Campbell. All right, that, I'm not saying Matt Campbell has been, he's turned that program around, but anybody who wants to to act like Matt Campbell is the second coming um, is not facing reality of the fact that he doesn't even own the state of Iowa, let alone um, his, in its respective conference with Oklahoma uh, still reigning um, as top dog in that conference. So, I'm not trying to make up for lost time with this uh, this little rant about Iowa State, but um, as far as the game on Saturday was concerned, um, what a tremendous effort by Iowa's defense. You know, we talked about this last week um, after the Indiana win. We saw Riley Moss with two pick sixes. We saw, you know, a, a pass rush that I actually thought was okay through most of the game. I thought it, it sort of fell off in the second half, and that was something that I was hoping Phil Parker would address and Kelvin Bell, of course, the defensive line coach for Iowa, and I think they did. This defensive line, if you watch this game back Saturday, they completely, they owned Iowa's O-line, or Iowa State's O-line, excuse me. Um, Brees Hall was held to a pedestrian, what, 60, 70 yards, whatever it was. Um, Iowa really put pressure on Purdy throughout the day, and Purdy made some bad, you know, bad throws. I, I get it. 
the throw uh, to Matt Hankins, the first pick deep down the field, was a, a bad throw. It was one-on-one coverage, but Hankins was with him. Hankins maybe got away with a little bit of a hold there, tugging the jersey of, uh, I believe it was Aiden, or uh, I believe it was Hutchinson, Xavier Hutchinson, uh, the wide receiver there. Um, but overall, Iowa's defensive line put pressure on Purdy. I thought Joe Evans played really, really well watching that tape back this week. I thought he really, he's playing bigger than he is right now. He reminds me a lot of like a Parker Hesse, maybe even a little bit, I'm not saying better than Parker yet, but I'm saying overall, as far as a pass rusher, I think he might be a bit better than Parker Hesse in that category. I think Parker, for his kind of undersized self, really developed into a good run stopper, and Joe probably needs to work on that some more. But Joe is a tremendous pass rusher, and him being undersized doesn't seem to affect him one bit. I thought Deontay Craig played well. We saw Noah Shannon. Um, I think he's playing really well right now on the inside. Logan Lee is... uh, holding his own, it seems like. I don't see any gaping holes right now for Iowa's defensive line. And that was a concern from a lot of people. I wasn't one of those people that was wildly concerned about Iowa's defense, uh, let alone the defensive line, but it was a concern. Um, yeah, YA Black is playing right now. Um, you know, you've got Zach Van Valkenburg. You know what you're going to get out of him. Tons of energy. That guy just runs until he drops, um, and we haven't seen him drop yet. This is an Iowa defensive line that I think can be really good by season's end. It's already good. I think it's already good. I mean, it really is. John Wagner, another guy I missed. And here's what's interesting. I know we've been talking about Iowa's defense these past two weeks, and rightfully so. And that's why Iowa's 2-0. There's no question about it. But you look at Iowa from an injury standpoint. This is the more... I, I don't recall two weeks into a season an Iowa team being this healthy. I really don't. Now, we'll see who plays on Saturday against Kent State. But the only significant injury Iowa has had to deal with right now during the season has been Kyler Schott. And it was a significant injury. We, we said it at the time. That was a significant injury for the interior of an offensive line that is young and, and inexperienced. But everybody else has stayed healthy. Charlie Jones got banged up week one. He came back, played Saturday. Tyler Linderbaum got beat up week one. He came back, played Saturday. Same with Spencer Petras. Iowa has stayed healthy, which is something Iowa has not... Last year, I mean, think of weeks one and two. You're down Seth Benson and Jack Campbell. That is huge to be down two guys at one very crucial position group for this Iowa uh, defense. So health has been a huge part of Iowa's success these first two weeks. And, um, you know, you you look at week one against Michael Penix, you might want to, you know, you look at it and say, well, he had a bad day. You know, maybe the ACL was bothering Penix and, and keeping him from, you know, really unleashing that offense. Well, now we have two weeks of basically the same result. I mean, both guys throw three picks. Both guys get benched. Um, this this has been an incredible start for this defense. And again, I'm not trying to toot my own horn on this, but I did say preseason, I said, I am not worried about the secondary. I had people saying secondary is a concern. It's always a concern. And I'm not the only one who said this, but there was no reason for concern with this secondary. Injuries could happen. They could always happen. But this secondary, led by, again, Matt Hankins, Riley Moss, Kayvon Merriweather, Jack Kerner, Dane Belton, and Justin Jacobs. We talked about him uh, a few minutes ago. That kid is playing his tail off right now. All right? Remember, he was a highly touted uh, recruit. And we're starting to see why I was having a problem um, keeping him off the field because how do you balance that? I mean, Dane Belton clearly deserves to play, but Justin Jacobs clearly deserves to play. And I think, again, if both those guys can stay healthy, man, that makes your, your defense so much more flexible. It can shift you back into the traditional 4-3. It can, uh, you know, shift you into a cash or, or as uh, Don Patterson likes to say, a nickel defense, the 4-2-5. Um, obviously, I think cash is a little bit more hybrid because Dane Belton's not a natural corner which typically with a nickel defense, you have a, uh, a third corner on the field. Um, but again, this secondary right now, in my opinion, is playing at an elite level. Iowa has the two best wins overall, if you combine the two, in the country. All right, Certainly Clemson's loss to Georgia. That, that Georgia win was huge week one. Um, Oregon on the road at Ohio State. Those are both better wins at this point in the season. But Iowa is the only team that's done it twice, all right. And one of those games has been on the road against a team who was in the top ten. Okay, 
So, you know, we'll see what happens with Iowa State and Indiana. I, 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 I feel confident that both those teams will still finish. I think they'll just, I think they'll be just fine. Uh, Michael Penix, you know, we'll see with him. I mean, his health to me is a question because he's dealt with injuries his entire career. And now coming off the torn ACL, he didn't look comfortable week one, but how much of that was Iowa's defense? So I think both of those teams, Indiana and Iowa State, will be just fine. Those will be tremendous wins for Iowa's resume come late November. And now you have two weeks for Iowa where you have an opportunity to grow offensively. 